Hey guys, so in this video we're going to introduce what a limit is in a graphical representation. What that means is we're going to talk about what the limit is and how to find it using all these graphs and all these visual representations of the function. So let's get started. So here we have a limit is the blank, right? So a professor spent like two, three hours speaking about these crazy formulas like three hour proofs, all these like crazy Greek signs like sigma, theta, all this shit, right? So what we're trying to do is just simplify what a limit is in the first place. So I'm just going to tell you that a limit is the y value. That's all it is, right? Just the y value. All right? So whenever we're looking for limits, we're looking ultimately just for a y value. That's all we want, right? But it's not that simple, all right? So they spent like three hours, but I'm going to try to do like in a minute, all right? So here we have the more formal definition, right, like of what you have to do when you're computing a limit in the red. So we're going to say that how we read this from left to right is that a limit is as x approaches a number, so x here arrow to a number, as x is approaching a number in the function of f of x, the limit gives you this L. So this L right here is the y value I was speaking about, right? So you're trying to approach a number and then in a function and then you want to ultimately find out what the y value of that number is, right? When you're approaching that number, what, what, what y value do you get? That is the question. So before I show you guys an example of how to compute this stuff graphically, let's go into the two different types of limits that you have, right? So we have two types of limits, and they are blank-sided and blank-sided. So that's going to be two-sided limits and one-sided limits. And I'm going to go over two-sided first, and then I'm going to go over one-sided. So that's why I wrote them in that order. All right? In most limits, when they ask you for them, the most traditional way of asking you for a limit is a two-sided way. So since it's the most common, I decided to just introduce that first. Right? So here's what I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to give you guys this little function here. And then I'm going to tell you guys, find the limit, right, in letter A. I'm going to tell you guys, find the limit as x approaches 0. So we're trying to approach 0 in f of x. So this graph that we have here is f of x, right? And we're trying to approach 0. So 0 on the x, right? So we're trying to approach values on the x and tell me what the y value is, right? And then by two-sided, what I mean is that you go from both sides, from the left and from the right. So I'm trying to go to 0, right? This, this is what I mean here by x approaches 0. That is the meaning of that. I'm trying to approach 0. And then of f of x. So this curve right here is f of x. And then let's say I come from the left hand side, right? So I come from from the left, from here. If I come from the left, I end up at the y value of, see, 0 here is on the x, it's on the, on the x axis, so the y value is 0, right? And then let's say I come from the right side, I'm going to end up in the same place, I'm going to end up in the same place, so I'm going to get 0 for both sides. So when they ask me what is my limit, I'm just going to tell them the y value, and what is the y value here? It is just 0. So 0 is the y value that you get to if you're trying to get to x equal to 0 right here, right? So limits, of course, are not so simple. This is just a simpler version of what a limit is with a nice little smooth curve, right? So a lot of times there's going to be all these, these chopped up functions that are not going to be so nice. But here we're going to introduce it in a nice way with a nice smooth curve. And then we're going to go into how it can get more complicated later on, which will be the next example. So then let's approach something else, right? So let's approach now. 0.5, right? So now we're going to approach. So now we're going to approach 0.5. So I'm going to say that this little line right here is 0.5, right? So this little line right here is on 0.5. So what I'm telling you to find is as you're trying to go to 0.5. So now we're going to say that we're going to go to 0.5 from the left, right? So I'm just going to erase all this stuff. You guys don't need to. And let's say I'm on my curve, right? And I'm coming from the left. Boom, boom 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 as I'm coming from the left hand side where do I end up at what is the y value that I get when I try to get to 0.5 right so I'm here at 0.5 and then I see that I end up here the y value that corresponds to 0.5 when I come from the left is going to be let's look across and then we're gonna say that's one right we're gonna say that the height of that graph is one and then we check it also with the right with the right side, right? So we come from the right. 
we come from the right and we're gonna say that we also end up here at one so the limit is just one because the left and the right equal each other right so we're just gonna go from the left hand side to the right hand side we're gonna be like what is the y value that we get and the y value that we get is just one we'll discuss when it's not when they're not equal to each other when you have different values like ugly functions we'll do that all in a second i just want you guys to understand visually what a limit is right what a limit is which is just a y value so now we're going to erase all this stuff and we're going to approach now in letter c we're going to approach two right so once again we only care about when x is equal to two so if we're trying to approach two we're going to look here at two and then we're going to check the y value that corresponds with this with this x value right so as i might as i'm trying to get to two and that's why I'm, I'm always going to say approach because I'm going to just travel in the function and I'm going to try to get to the y value that corresponds to that x value, right? So by approaching, we're going to turn that into like traveling on the function, getting on the function and go and approaching your x value, right? So let's go back to blue. Let's go back to blue. And I'm going to try to get to 2. And I'm going to start off always to the left and then I'm going to check the right just because it's makes sense left of the graph to right side of the graph so I'm gonna get all the way down here I'm gonna travel my graph and I'm gonna make it all the way to 2 and when I get to 2 what is my y value it's on the x-axis so my y value is 0 and let's check it with the right side so I'm gonna get on the graph here coming down Woo! done as I'm getting to 2 what is my y value and it's also 0 okay so here we discuss how to get a limit based on when we have a graph and we're trying to approach that number, right? So in here all these numbers in blue, the 0, 1, and 0, they're all just y values that the function gives you when you try to get to when you try to get to your x value, when you try to approach your x value. Okay? And then these these little blue arrows here are the process of showing the approaching to the number. Because I'm not just telling you what is it at that number, I'm telling you as you approach the number, what value do you eventually end up at? You know? And this makes more this makes a bigger difference when you just don't end up at a number, when you end up at something else. And then we'll discuss what that something else is in a second. So now let's move on to the next example where we approach something else and we just don't get to a number. So let's go to that. So here we have the one-sided limit example, right? So in one-sided limits, you're not guaranteed to always approach just one number, this one finite number, right? So that's going to correspond to our first blank here where we have that limits may not always give you a blank answer. And by blank answer, I mean a finite answer. And just by finite, I mean like a 2 or a 1 or a 0. That's a finite answer. It's a, it's a whole number, you know, like boom, a number. So that's going to open doors. So for us to discuss infinite limits, which if you guys think about it is the opposite of having a finite limit, it's an infinite limit. So now let's talk about the next bullet point where it says a limit exists only if the right limit and the left limit are or are not equal to each other. So what we're going to say here is that they have to be, they have to be equal to each other. So they are equal to each other. So if we just scroll up for a second, we see that if we go, if we approach, let's just pick, let's erase all this for a second. You guys don't have to do this. I just want you guys to just look at it. So let's say I try to get to this, this line right here, right? If I come from the left, I end up at this point. And if I come from the right, I'm gonna end up at that point. So that's what I mean. The limit exists there because if I come from the left and I come from the right, I'm gonna end up at the same point, all right? So that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. So we're going to go over some simple notation, right? Some notation here that we have. So I kind of spoke about the limit from the left just informally. I just told you guys, hey, come from the left, and then, hey, come from the right. That's what I told you guys, right? So here we're just going to talk about the notation. How do you, if I don't tell you approach the limit from the left, how do you read it in math, right? So all you're going to do is that little constant that you're doing, like, you know, in this case, like 2 or 0 that you're approaching, it's going to have a negative as an exponent. So that negative exponent that we have is going to mean left hand side. And if negative means left, right means positive. So a positive sign is going to give us a right hand limit, while a negative exponent is going to give us a left hand limit. 
So to go straight into an example so you guys can understand what we're doing here. And here we're just going to have an example one. We're going to try to approach we're going to try to approach zero from the left. And here the word approach takes a whole different meaning, right? Because before we didn't have any of these ugly things called asymptotes in our graph, right? So here we're going to spot out the asymptotes real quick, right? So we're going to draw the asymptotes in red. So we recognize as this being a rational function, right? This is a rational function of f of x equal to 1 over x. You guys should recognize this from the previous videos of rational functions. We're going to have a horizontal asymptote, and we're going to also going to have a vertical asymptote, right? So let's see how these, these asymptotes affect our approaching to 0. So we care about getting to x when x is equal to 0, right? But if you guys see when x is equal to 0, we have an asymptote, right? So we have an asymptote. So what that means we're not going to get a finite number. And that, that, is a, that is not a problem. It is just a different type of scenario, right, that we're going to be able to cover. So let's say I'm trying to get to, to 0 from the left, right? So I'm coming here from the left-hand side, and I'm going to try to get to 0. So I'm going to jump on my function. I'm going to travel my function. Uh, let's stick with uh, green. Let's go with green. So I'm getting on my function here, right? Boom. Actually, not all my function there. Right? As I'm as I'm trying to get to zero, you guys see that from the left hand side, I'm just gonna like kind of just dive in, right? I'm just like boom, I'm dying. So what what y value, right? Because at the end of the day, a limit is a y value. So what y value I'm actually getting to as I'm as I'm approaching zero, and that's going to be we're never actually gonna get to zero because we're on the asymptote. We're just gonna travel alongside it, right? We're just gonna go all the way down, right? So we're going to go all the way down. So low, I just ran out of paper. So I'm going to go so low in the y value. And what is the lowest y value you can think of? And that's going to be negative infinity. So the, the meaning here is that as I'm going to get to, as I'm trying to approach 0, I'm never actually going to get to a finite value. I'm just going to end up just taking a big dive and going all the way into negative infinity. So that is the meaning of the the negative infinity here being our limit so when we have a limit of being a negative infinity or positive infinity means that as we're trying to get to our x value we're eventually just going to end up just following that asymptote wherever it is you know this case we follow the asymptote to negative infinity right so now let's take a different side from from the right side right so now we're trying to approach from the right side so we're trying to come from here so now we're going to ride our function just follow our function and and here's the goal we're trying to get here right but we can't get there because there's an asymptote and the function is not taking us there. The function is just taking us up. We're trying to see like, man, can I touch anywhere here like where x is zero? But I can't because my function is just taking me up. So you're just taking a big ride on this roller coaster that's just never going to stop and you're just going to go up, up, up. We're going to go up till we run out of paper. It's going to be a while. So I'm just going to stop there. So I'm going up so high that I'm just going to call that positive infinity. Because the y value that you're going to get to, we can't call it a finite number, but it's just positive infinity. So now that we have computer limits from the left and from the right, I'm going to ask you guys the question, does the limit exist, right? Like, do we have a limit here from the left and from the right? So we got a limit here from the left, which is negative infinity, and we got a limit here from the right, which is positive infinity, right? Now, before I talk about does the limit exist, don't make a a lot of students like making this this assumption that limits from the left are going to be negative infinity and limits from the right are going to be positive infinity don't do that because they can just switch it up on you and I'll give you guys an example real quick where you guys can see when I switch it up on you that it's actually different so now let's go back into the question of does the limit exist and if we go back into this bullet right here that we have I tell you guys that a limit exists only if the left side and the right side are equal to each other. So here we ask ourselves, is zero from the left equal to zero from the right? And we say no, because we have negative infinity to positive infinity. So they don't actually equal each other, so it's gonna be a big no, and then we're just gonna have a sad face. We're gonna be sad forever. Hmm. All right, so now let's move on to example two in which we're going to discuss the function, we're going to try to find the asymptotes if it has any, and then we're going to talk about the limit from the left and from the right. So let's do this. So let's go back to our color red. Boom, red. So 
let's first start drawing out the asymptotes, right? So if you guys you guys don't have to recognize this function, so I'm not gonna even gonna cover it to confuse you guys. So don't worry about it. If you guys do know the function, awesome. If you don't, don't worry, because we don't have to know functions in this this video. We just have to know we we'll have to recognize visually what it is. Then we'll do all the boring work of the function. So we have a vertical asymptote here, and then we have a horizontal asymptote here. Then when it comes to limits, we don't we don't really care too much about horizontal asymptotes, we mainly care about vertical asymptotes, right? Because we're trying to approach x values, and x values and vertical asymptotes are like in there, right? Vertical asymptote is an x value, so that's what comes in conflict with our limits. We don't, we don't really focus on horizontal asymptotes. They're going to matter, but we're not crazy about them. We, mo we mainly care about vertical asymptotes. So now let's go and compute the same number. We're going to try to approach 0 from the left. So if I try to approach 0 from the left-hand side, right, I'm going to go back to green, just a second, going back to green, and I'm going to try to, you know, approach zero, uh, get a value here where zero is, right? Zero is here, and I'm going to get on my graph. And you guys are going to see that I'm never going to get to zero. I'm, I'm not going to get a finite number. So, once again, it's okay if we don't get a finite number, we're just going to call it positive infinity. Because in this case, we're going to a y value so high, we can't define it. So we're just going to call it positive infinity. And we're pretty much done with the left-hand side. So here we're going to, now we're going to go to the next one. Where we're going to compute the right-hand side. So 0 from the right. So we're going to try to approach 0. Oh, we're not getting anywhere. We're just going to keep going up. So in that case, we're going to say that we're going to, we're going to positive infinity as well. So the idea here is that we try to approach zero, we try to get to zero from the left, but our function didn't take us to a number, a function just took you up, so we call the positive infinity. Here's our vertical asymptote. From the right side, we try to get to zero, but we just went up. So nothing could be done, we just call it infinity or negative infinity, whatever it is in that case, and we move on with life, because we have an asymptote at the number we're trying to approach. So that's, that's a pretty important point that I want to make before we finish this video. Now, whenever you have an asymptote, in this case, our asymptote is x equal to 0, right? At the x value you're going to approach, you're most likely going to end up at infinity or, or negative infinity, depending on where the function is going. So it's a pretty good thing to be looking out for, right? So asymptotes and infinities. So we'll make that relation in a little more. I'll give you guys lots of examples with functions and all this boring work, and um, we'll, we'll kill it. So now let's, let me ask you guys, does a limit exist? So we go back over here. I'm going to erase it, maybe not, whatever. I'm going to go back over here, right? So I tell you guys, does the limit exist? So they have to be equal to each other, right? They have to equal each other, the left and the right-hand side. Does this happen in this case? And then we're going to be like, yes, we have positive infinity, and we have positive infinity, both from the left. So the limit, whether you go from the left or you go from the right, whether you go from the left or whether you go from the right, you can say that as you go to zero, you're going to get positive infinity. So yes happy face. So the point of this is that in example one, if I tell you, if I approach zero, what's going to be my answer? Well, I don't know because it depends. Do you go from the left or do you go from the right? Because you get two different answers. But here in example two, I'm just going to tell you, if you approach zero, where, where, what's going to be your y value? And you're going to be like, oh, it doesn't matter if you're going from, coming from the left or you're coming from the right because it's still positive infinity. So that's the point. A limit is like a quick answer that doesn't ma doesn't depend on the left or on the right. It just kind of be like, boom, give me the answer, right? So now, this is some practice problems and still some graphical representation of limits and how we can express this. So, see you guys.